back after our 10 minute rest. We've got nice uh, rested dough now. We'll keep the other one covered for right now. And now we just need to put and make this into a round pizza. We're gonna use a pan today. We're gonna use a round pan today, but if you don't have a round pan, that's not a problem. Just use a rectangular pan and make your dough more of an oval and fill that. Or if you're really fancy, like I actually am normally, I use uh, put it and put it right on a peel and then cook it right on my uh, my steel or, or stone. So today though, we're gonna show you on a pan uh, which most people would have access to. So we're gonna just spread this out and we're not going to use a rolling pin today, we're just going to use our hands to stretch this out. One thing you want to do if you've got some big bu air bubbles in it is pop some of those. We're just going to start spreading this out into a circle. All right, and we'll just use our fingertips here. Um, and the, the dough's still a little bit springy, so you have to take your time with this and put it out. Just keep moving out here. Again, pop any really big ones that you have here. And don't worry, you can turn it over. You can do that. And again, we're doing this on this mixture of, of flour, regular flour, and, and the semolina that we have in our system. So we're just gonna be doing that. We're gonna push this out a little ways to get it kind of round. We wanna try to get to something that's kind of round here. Then we're gonna start to stretch it out. And so we're just gonna keep rotating and we're stretching it. We're just trying to stretch the outside of this now. Not the whole, not the whole pizza here. We're just gonna stretch around the outside here. And we just keep doing this, keep turning. If we have to, we can put, put some of our, our uh, mixture in between there, back in there. Just keep stretching out and turning. I'm trying to keep it relatively round. Nothing magic about the round other than it looks nice. And so if we get a place that's you know not very round, we can we can try to, to, to work that a little bit better here and, and get going. So we can then, once we get it out a little ways, some, some doughs will stretch out really, really nice and they won't take long at all to get out there. Other ones, they like to be stretched back a little bit. If they're too, if they're too, um, want to come back too much, just let it rest for a little bit and then come back to it. So once we get it out there though a little ways, then we can actually pick it up and start to start to stretch it a little bit more. Um, and we can use the weight of the pizza, the weight of the dough to stretch it. We want to be a little bit careful and you always want to be able to get back, let it get down and rest there. You're just trying to get it out. You don't want to tear it. Um, and then so we can also just stretch it a little bit here. Put it on our, our fingertips here and just stretch. We're not going to be throwing the pizza dough. Uh, you know, people get, get good enough to do that. You can, you can do that eventually. So we're just gonna keep stretching this out. Um, and in this case, it's gonna take us a little while because this dough is pretty springy. Um, and so we're gonna stretch it out. And we wanna get to something that is about a 12 or 14, probably a 14 inch pizza here, maybe as big as 16 inches. Um, don't worry about how round it is. In this case, we're we're not we're not as round as might be nice, but so we can just keep going here. This pizza dough really wants to wants to come back in, so we're gonna then just stretch it out slowly. And and the weight of the pizza, weight of the dough here is actually a really good thing to to actually stretch it nice and slowly. And we can stretch around the edge a little bit and use the weight to let it hang and. And stretch again you know you you see in the pizza parlor they're throwing it up in the air you can certainly do that um, but it is it takes a little bit of practice to do that um, and so we're gonna stretch it out here again this is a pretty nice um, thicker a little bit thicker dough so we, we can we can do this and then just look on our plate here our, our, our pan is a little bit small yet, so we'll just take it right back off and, and stretch a little bit more so we can get some size to it. Again, it's not really important. You're better off at first, especially. Don't stretch it out too big. Make a little bit smaller pizza. It's not a big deal. Um, the size isn't, you know, isn't critical unless you're, unless you're selling these. Um, 
you don't have to get a perfect size. So we can, we can just stretch it out and then plop it onto our pan. Um, that's a pretty nice size for the, the pizzas that we're making here today. And we can try to make it a little bit rounder. We don't want to, this, this pan has some holes, so we don't want to push the dough down through the holes. We want to get that there. Then we're just going to take our sauce. We use about a half a cup of sauce here. One of the things you want to avoid is putting on too many toppings, and that includes sauce. So we made this sauce before. You saw the recipe for that. We're going to put about a half a cup on. We don't need that much, and then we're going to spread it around. We want to leave a little bit of an edge that we can get a nice crusty spot um, to have that good that good crust on, around the outside. So a half cup here is is more than enough here. So we got plenty of of, of sauce on there. Next, we're going to actually spread our pepperoni. We're going to make a pepperoni pizza today. Our pepperoni here is uh, two ounces of pepperoni that we have. This is very thinly sliced. That's how I like my pepperoni. If you don't want it that thinly sliced, or if you've got some small stuff, you can actually put this on top of the cheese as well. Um, I'm going to put this, because it's so thinly sliced, I'm going to put it under the cheese. And we're just going to put it on here. This, this is so thinly sliced, we're going to put it almost a, almost a full layer of it. But again, this is only two ounces of pepperoni. We're not, we're not putting a half a pound of pepperoni on here or anything like that. And you will find as you make your own pizzas that it's really best to be light on the toppings instead of heavy. You'll, you'll uh, actually get better pizzas, they'll cook better, um, and they'll, they'll actually be a nicer, a nicer pizza. Use quality ingredients instead of a lot of ingredients. And that's, this, this pepperoni is a really high quality pepperoni. Cheese comes next here. We're just making a pepperoni and cheese. Very simple pizza here. One of the things I would highly recommend is get good cheese and get it in a block and then just grate the cheese. All you need is one of these one of these uh, box graters or something similar to that. Again, not too much cheese. Here we have just about six ounces of cheese, but I do have two different kinds of mozzarella here. I've got a regular mozzarella. Whole milk mozzarella is actually best. Quite difficult to find uh, here in the Waterloo Cedar Falls area, but if you can find it, it's, it's really, it really makes a creamier melt um, and then I've got some smoked mozzarella. I really like that flavor that that smoked mozzarella adds to there. It is often really nice to use a couple kinds of cheese on your system to, or on your pizza so you get a little bit better taste. One thing that some people like to put on is fresh mozzarella. Fresh mozzarella though in general is to use as the whole cheese is too wet. It's got too much moisture in it and so you want to be careful of that. And that's the same reason if you're going to put vegetables on, and I love vegetables on my pizza, mushrooms or onions, peppers, I like to cook them first, saute them in a little bit of olive oil to take that moisture out of them. And then they cook better up on the thing. So we just want to sprinkle this cheese around. One of the things we want to avoid is getting, getting it over the edge. So we want to put this stuff in the middle here um, and put our pizza on or put our cheese on. And uh, I guess we got phones going on everywhere here um, at, at our place today. So we're, we're trying to do the video here. So we're going to put this on. This does not look like a lot of cheese, but when you get this and it melts, it's going to be plenty of cheese on the system. Again, you can, you can buy pizzas with a lot of cheese on them, and you can put a lot of cheese on, but they don't tend to bake all that well, and you'll find that this is going to be plenty of cheese uh, on the pizza here. So we're going to put the smoked mozzarella on then. And then our pizza is going to be ready to go in the oven. And so we're going to put it in our oven. Again, uh, if you watch the recipe while we were making the sauce, you want to make sure that your oven is warmed up for at least an hour and as high a temperature typically as a home oven goes, 500. Or if you happen to have one that goes to 550, that's even better. You can just take then and make sure this is nicely rounded up. We're going to pop it in the oven. It's going to take about 10 minutes. What we will do is check it after a couple minutes and then we will turn it. We will turn it several times uh, while it's cooking there. So let's pop it in the oven. We'll be back.
when it's done. All right, we're back now. Our pizza's been in for about 10 minutes and uh, now nice and done here. We've been, we've been making it here. We're just gonna pull it out. Be very, really careful now, it's nice and hot. So you see now we got a nice, nice uh, pizza that's nice and brown, very hot. If we look underneath, we got some nice browning on the crust here. A little bit hard to see, but we got some nice browning on the crust. You wanna be able to look at that. And one of the things we need to do is spend a little bit of time waiting for it to cool and set a little bit. But one of the things if you wanna really add a little bit of pop to your pizzas here is add a couple of things as they come out of the oven. Uh, this would be a great time to add a few cubes of fresh mozzarella or some other cheese that would maybe otherwise get a little bit too um, too melty in the in that time. Or I like to add a couple of things. One is some cheese here. This is uh, called Pecorino Romano. It's a sheep's milk cheese, but very very good on on pizza as a as a topping, a little bit of extra. So we're going to grate a little bit of cheese on here. Pizza is nice and warm, so it still um, can can uh, melt that cheese, but it doesn't doesn't burn it. And it, you know, we're just adding an accent here. We're not trying to add a lot of extra cheese, so we're just using a microplane grater here, or any kind of grater that makes nice fine things. Um, some some uh, other kinds of of cheese, you know, would be good as well, especially hard grating cheeses, Parmesan. Uh, especially if you've got some, some good Parmesan um, from, from Italy or some other good stuff. The other thing I like to use is sprinkle on a little bit of olive oil onto it. So we put a little bit of olive oil on. We want to be careful not to get too much. So I'm going to just gonna use my finger over here. You know, if you're not real good at this, you might want to put it into something like a, a spoon or something before you do it. You just want a tablespoon or so of the olive oil. You don't want to get carried away there and get too much on the system. But again, you want a high quality extra virgin olive oil if you're going to do that. So we then we're just going to let it rest for just a little bit and we're going to then uh, cut the pizza and do what we, the favorite part of course, which is eating the pizza. So we're going to be uh, ready to do that uh, here. And so let's just, uh, let's just give her a cut here. We got our pizza cutter. We'll cut her up here. I like to cut mine usually when I got a pizza this size into about eight pieces, um, but however many you, you want to go, eight is, eight is an easy number to get because you can just cut it in half and then fourths and got to remember this pan was in the oven so be, make sure you're protecting your surface from heat. So you saw I had some pot holders underneath this. Um, we're actually on a stone countertop so it would be able to take the heat. Uh, but a lot of countertops couldn't, so you'd want to be real careful. And of course, you want to be protecting yourself uh, as well. And so the pizza is probably hotter than you're going to want to be eating right away. But but you can take that, and there again, you see the nice, nice crust pizza here. This is a little bit thicker. This is a New York style type pizza, nice and brown here on the bottom, so you get a nice crust. So that's up for, for now. We'll be posting uh, some some of the recipes some of the uh, references here. If you have uh, questions or things, get to the extension office, your 4-H. Um, and if you want, we can have some more videos with some more advanced pizza crusts uh, and things like that. So otherwise, enjoy your pizza. Only takes a couple of hours total, start to finish, and only about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes of actual effort. Most of that time is waiting for the dough. Uh, to rise and then you have your great homemade pizza. Thank you Okay, we're back just to show you a little bit if those of you who might want to cook directly on your baking stone uh, Or your your steel which is what I use there We're just gonna stretch out the pizza exactly the same way, but instead of a pan we're going to have a prepared peel here. We're going to have some of that semolina and flour mix on it. We want to make sure we've got enough so that that pizza isn't going to stick. If it sticks and we're trying to put it in the oven, that's a big problem. So we're just going to take that and we're just going to throw our, our pizza dough on that. We want to make sure it fits about that size. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to, to uh, put the toppings on that just like we would, just like we did when it was on the pan. So we got about our half cup of sauce we're going to put on. We're going to put that on here 
And this pizza, we're going to do a sausage pizza. We've got some pre-cooked sausage here. Um, and so we're going to put that, uh, because we want that to crisp up a little bit, we're going to put that on top of the cheese. So we're going to put the sauce. We're going to go right to the cheese. Again, we don't, we don't want to get too much cheese on there, but we want good quality cheese, preferably cheese that we've um, had and, and shredded ourselves rather than pre-shredded cheese. Well worth the, the extra effort of buying the block of cheese and shredding it. You tend to get good, better cheese in, in many cases, and you don't have any extra stuff in it. All shred, pre-shredded cheese is going to have some, some flow agents in it, which is basically things that aren't going to be adding to the taste, aren't going to be adding to the quality uh, of your cheese. So again, we're using mozzarella, regular mozzarella, and then we're using some smoked mozzarella here that we're putting on. All right, we're gonna put that on. One thing you wanna make sure, you don't wanna be pressing down on your pizza uh, here because you don't want it to stick to the peel. You also don't wanna be spilling a lot of cheese out on your out on your peel. So if you get some cheese out there um, or other things, get that get that cleaned off. Once in a while, if you take and you shake your your peel a little bit, so you get that. And then we've got some some pre-cooked sausage here, just some little cubes of sausage. Um, this is just an Italian sausage. Again, high quality. It's better to go for for high quality ingredients rather than lots of them. So we'll put that on here. Spread it around evenly as we can. It's not that, not that critical to get it evenly, especially if you're the one that's uh, doing the cutting. You can, you can save, save yours and, and make, make the stuff you like. Again, I often put vegetables on along with the meat or instead of the meat. Um, that's perfectly fine. Just pre-cook your vegetables in a little bit of oil, uh, on the, uh, preferably olive oil on the, on the oven or on the stove, sorry, not the oven. Um, and then we're gonna slide this right onto the prepared steel that I've got. I don't think you're gonna be able to see the steel here. So we're gonna pull it out here and we're going to slide this on. So best to, to wiggle it a couple times to so make sure it's gonna come off. And just put it right on there, pull the peel out. And in the oven we go. And it actually typically takes a little bit less time when we're cooking right on that steel. So. That's the way we can enjoy it. Of course, you want to turn it. Again, now you're going to use the peel to turn that pizza a couple times while it's cooking. So just to wrap up video here on our pizza making day, pizza videos here, we made a couple of pizzas here, a pepperoni one, and then we made a, a sausage one. Um, so if you want to think about some projects you could do related to pizza, uh, obviously you can make pizza and eat it, but pizza isn't a good thing to bring as a baked good to the, to the fair. Um, as a project because it's got the dairy on it and uh, isn't really uh, something that travels well anyway, even if it was uh, an okay project to bring from a, from a rule standpoint. I think the dairy uh, makes that uh, really tough. So, but there are still a lot of projects that you could do with it. You could take a look at different kinds of crust. We only made one kind of crust today, but you could look at different kinds, look at the nutritional value of them. You know, some using white flour versus versus whole wheat, for example, or put partially whole wheat in. Most recipes can have some whole wheat, and you could take a look at the nutrition or the taste, what you think of the taste of those. You could look at different kinds of pizza and document some of that and make a project out of that, your New York style, your Chicago style, Detroit, um, or things like that. You could also do some of the things we talked about, you know, cooking a pizza with vegetables that have been uh, sauteed a little bit in front versus uh, you know putting them on raw, seeing how what the differences are and how those come out um, and things like that. You could also look at the cost of homemade pizza versus uh, making pizza um, there. So lots of things that you could do with uh, with a project for for with the pizza or other kinds of baking. Um, let me know if you have any questions or if you have. Uh, some desire. Again, we will be posting the recipe that we used for the dough um, and uh, I'll post a recipe for the sauce that we made um, and then some references for the books that I, I referenced here earlier, the, the uh, pizza bible, the elements of pizza, um, and then the uh, whole grain 
uh, Bread's book by Peter Reinhardt. Um, so there's lots of lots of references out there. So you can make some pizza now while you're maybe stuck at home, um, just as a way to, to use some time and learn some things. But you can also make some projects out of it uh, as well. Um, and also maybe one other project I missed that this actually brings up is the different cooking things. Where we cooked it on the pan, this one here on this side, we cooked on the pan. You see the crust is a little bit, uh, it's nice crust, but it's a little bit uh, different color than the crust that we're, where we cooked it right on the baking steel. So you could have some comparisons there if you have access to a baking stone um, and, and that you could use on a pan. You could compare how they cook um, and, and how, you, how you like them different or, or not um, when, they're, when they're baked that way. So lots of projects. Let the office know the, um, or your 4-H leader know if you've got questions and we'll be happy to try to do some more work for you. Thanks.